right, let's do it. London. London. 2019. <laughs> Ooh, I this took is going to be good. On kids. the train <laughs> from Oxford to London. And it was one of those days that looked like it might rain, it might not. So we made a plan on the train. I said, okay, if it's raining, we're going to go to the museum. And if it's not raining, we're going to the zoo. And he said, okay. So we got to Marlebin Station in central London. We walked out and he said, you know, Dad, I don't want to go to the zoo or the museum. I said, what do you want to do? He said, let's just walk around. You sure? Yeah, okay. We just walked around. So at every intersection, he said, let's go this way. I said, okay. And so he just led the way through London that day. We walked around for eight hours. So at one point, he was jumping around park benches and met these kids from Croatia where they got into a little tickling match. And another time in like a little alleyway, he saw this huge cardboard box that was like almost as big as he is. And he got into this cardboard box and wore it like a turtle shell. So he walked around London in a cardboard box for like an hour. And everybody would do double takes looking at him. And he felt so cool in the cardboard box. And then at some point, we found ourselves right in front of the West End musical Wicked. Mm. And the show was about to begin in 10 minutes. And I said, do you have any tickets? What are the, what are the best tickets you have? They had eight throw center tickets. They had two left. So we're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go see Wicked. So he left his cardboard box there. We went in and saw Wicked. And he, at one point he whispered to me, he said, Dad, I like the girl next to me. And I said, okay. And later I look over and he's holding her hand. He <laughs> held her hand. <laughs> they held hands. And so show was over. We go home and I tuck him into bed that night. And I said, did you have a good day? And he said, I had a great day. And I said, all right, so what was your favorite thing today? And he thinks for a bit. And then he said, the cardboard box. <laughs> and I was just like, I marveled at that. I was just thinking later, like, if I would have planned and said, no, we're going to the museum. Come on, it's, a, it's an important museum for you to know. Then he wouldn't have had this unoptimized experience and stumbled into the cardboard box. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you know, I think about life and I think about like that day as a metaphor for how we tend to make plans because plans seem to be the, the tool we use to make the most of our time. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't always make sense, does it? Because like, as you go through life, you keep getting new information moment to moment that helps you make the, the best decision for that moment, not what you thought would be the best decision earlier when you made mm -hmm. a plan, which was a prediction. So, I think about, like, for example, this stupid house I'm in right now. <laughs> so this is my stupid house, everybody. I don't like this house. But here I am. I would never guess based on your assortment of matching plateware. <laughs> <Fine. and> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. How much energy I've clearly put into this house and making it perfect with all of its decor. <laughs> There's nothing on the walls. <laughs> no furniture. <laughs> yeah. Except for some mice. Yeah, there was, we were going to... Legitimately. Yeah, I have three pet mice. We were going to bring them out. It would be distracting. I thought about getting rid of this house and getting a house that was more suited for me. And I actually put an offer on a place. Mm -hmm. And it was a really nice place. It was at the end of Clyde Key Wharf, mm -hmm. which is out there like in the water. And oh, man, it was nice. And so it was like the night before... My offer was accepted. And it was the night before I was going to put down the deposit. It was going to be mine. I fell asleep that night thinking... Like at first thought, I was thinking, I'm going to be so happy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, wait, I'm already happy. What, am I going to be more happy tomorrow? No, I'm already happy. It's like, well, then why am I doing this? Why am I spending a bunch of money if I'm already happy? So I yanked it. So I didn't buy it. And here I am in this stupid house because it has no obstacles. Like it's warm. It's quiet. It's not suited to me perfectly, but that's okay. Like it doesn't get in my way. And then from there, I think, how many other things in our life are we okay to just not optimize, right? Depends where you draw the line, right? Your romantic relationship, your job, your family. Oh, but nobody has the perfect family mm -hmm. of their wishes. Our location, where you live, our diet. Like, you have to kind of decide what's worth optimizing, that we don't need to optimize everything. It's okay to have some things be good enough. And so I'm so glad you brought up The Paradox of Choice by Barry Schwartz. I really fucking internalized that book. It's a great book. The ending of that where he says like, okay, I've been describing the problem. So what's a recommendation? And he says, satisficing. 
There's maximizing and there's satisfying. I had no idea you're going to bring this up. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Maximizers have been found to feel worse about the decisions they make. They look into every possible option. They try to make the best possible choice. But studies show that they feel worse about the choice they make. Whereas satisficers may not make the absolute best possible choice, but they feel much better about the choices they make. So, yeah, I think a lot of who I am is because of satisficing. And if I seem like I make weird decisions in life, for example, like not even continuing to pursue making money, Mm -hmm. it's because I'm satisficing. Like I really took that lesson to heart and have shaped my life around it. Just for definition terms, right? Because people might think optimizing is trying to eke out the every last iota of improvement, right? But I think what we're really talking about is... Wait, sorry to interrupt. You know, like if you were to hear Paul McCartney go, hey, Jude, you'd be like, whoa, just to hear him sing two notes. Yeah. <laughs> to hear you go, optimizing. <laughs> That's like, <Yeah>. whoa. <laughs> That's uh, classic. It's classic, you know. Sorry. You know, if that is my legacy, so, <laughs> so be it. Optimizing. Optimizing. I think what we're talking about is where to focus your finite energy on improving versus leaving things as they are, right? In a sense, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think optimizing, when I think of optimizing, optimizing is leading to optimal. What does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's open-ended, so it just continues forever. But it's a helpful word. I'm just curious how you currently think about where to focus your energy on improving internally, externally, versus leaving things be. Mm. And this is a conversation that's near and dear to me. One of my most effective friends basically has said, I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, yeah, I optimize for like one or two things and everything else is good enough. Like I just, it, I just yeah. have to get it to good enough. Nice. And that's it. And he's incredibly effective yeah. in life. And he's also a very happy guy in general. Hard to know how much of that is out of the box versus due to the decisions yeah. and the way he views the world, but seems to contribute. Yeah. So how do you think about then where you might maximize versus where you satisfy? Or is it, because I know it's not good enough across the board. I find that hard to believe. Hmm. What do I maximize? I'm not sure. Or maybe maximize is too polarizing a word. <gasps> No, you know what I think it is? Yeah. If it's really fun. Okay. If you think it's just actually really fun to like, maybe some people set up their, well, let's just say they get into bread making. Yeah. And they're just like, I want to set up like the best bread making. They're just having fun with it. Mm-hmm. Then great. They can maximize, you know, people who get really into high fidelity audio. Yeah. And they nerd out and they know it's stupid. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, I don't care. I want this thing with the gold plated you know, cable connector, whatever. Right. <laughs> and I think if you have fun optimizing, mm-hmm. then it's worth it. If, if maximizing that is, if the process is fun to you, mm-hmm. I think that should be the barometer. But I, I think that saying enough, good enough, is a superpower. 